this has been this scenario is being set up because that wasn't the only thing that went on in '97. There's something that I cannot talk about because it doesn't fully concern me. There's something that I can't talk about, and that is what really started all the problems. That is what led to me being the one that spoke out because I realised I was the only one that could. I was the only one that could. No. Well, I've seen the people, if you look at the video that we done, yeah. the child lion, Gift of Christmas. Yeah. Now, Watkins was at the centre of that. The gift of Christmas, the world at its best, we mustn't forget. When you see Watkins meet Esther Ranson in that video, knowing what I know about Watkins now, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't, that ain't right. And she's all, you know, I mean, look at her, yeah, with Savile. You know what I mean? Punching the back with his chain and that, biting it in her teeth and that. It would have been completely irrelevant to anything that I was working on. I had no, nobody had ever complained to me, of course, if a child had come to me or a young person had come to me or child one, we would have acted upon it. But all I heard was gossip in the office. And I never worked in his department, although I did once or twice appear on Jim or Fix It. It was only as a guest. So I never played a part in his life or in his career and nobody ever complained to me. The fuck are you, man? These are the people that the kids are running to. And then look at her shit excuse afterwards and that sitting at crocodile tears. You know, it looks like we've all <laughs> colluded with him. <laughs> you cunt. You stupid cunt. Do you think we believe you? I'm not here to defend myself. The fact is that everybody working in the music industry, television and in uh, journalism had heard those rumours. It's, it's, it was as they say, an open secret. That's what acting is. Acting is lying. Acting is making an audience believe that what they're happening, what they're seeing, is really happening. That what they're happening, what they're seeing, is really happening. So you're deceiving them. <laughs> really happening. So you're deceiving them. So if we can continue to deceive you, <laughs> if we can continue to deceive you, and you enjoy it, we're liars. <laughs> We're liars. Jimmy Savile and Prince Charles were friends. I'm sorry, but it needs fucking saying. It's true, right? Now, if you're going to be his friend, what are you going all quiet for on the back end of things and not even talking about it or mentioning it? Jimmy Savile's done well, hasn't he? Ah, oh, and you look around and you'll say, he's not what you think you know. <laughs> the forces of darkness are at work there. <laughs> That's wrong. You're run, you're part, you could be king. You could be properly in charge of this country. And your mates were several. And no one sat this geezer down and said, we'd like to ask you about this. Why? Because it's all controlled. And they're not gonna even allow him to be put in a position where he sat there and asked about it. But, but if it was me, you, or anyone else in this room, we'd be fucked. And what's that all about? It's all about money. And sex. sex. And music. Sometimes. Dirty boy, some more kids, drink spiker, spank, manager, uh. boy like a lad, want a record deal, get hyper, hack, better pull sad man's back up, oh, fucking Bill. hell. Corrupted. Corrupted, BBC, Corrupted, David Cameron, Corrupted. Is it not uh, absurd and offensive that you are complicit in covering up child abuse at and within your own corporation?
forget about it in the old Bailey. They wasted £100 million of the taxpayers' money, right, on a fraud court case in the old Bailey. I'm telling you the truth. These people have lied. They need to come back to court. I've got evidence right here. Tom Crow, head of legal at News International. He knew about phone hacking. 2002, not 2006, 2007. The trophy in his media stable. It was read by more than 5 million people. Many people who read that newspaper knew that it exposed the misdemeanors of the rich, the royal and the In 1984, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act was put in place to protect the public from unscrupulous and corrupt police officers. But there is nothing in place to protect us, the public, from unscrupulous and corrupt journalists. And the story was that I was trying to set up my ex-wife so that I could win custody of Tegan. And uh, that's complete bollocks. What happened there, one day I was living in uh, near Epping, it's called Faden, Faden Boys or Faden Bois, I think they call it. And I was in a barn conversion now with Emma B and uh, my new management, Joey and all that, they were looking to get me another record deal. I remember going for a meeting in his office because this guy was in with uh, Death Row Records and they was looking to sign me. And I just thought, I don't want to go to Death Row Records. But I was meeting this guy and he was paying the rent and it was going now. And uh, I weren't right, I wasn't right and I was soaking tops. If I had to go somewhere, there was something that had to be done, I'm soaking tops now and I'm just, I don't feel right. And uh, this was getting worse and worse. And um, after the machete attack, you know, that, that brought it out so much more. Because up until that point, I was like, all right, I'm sweating. Or, you know, I can cover that up. I can, I, can, I, can, I can cover that. But once things started getting into territory where things were going on with my mind and I just couldn't, I didn't feel settled. Every scenario was worrying me. <clears throat> and uh, I just, I wasn't comfortable in my own skin at all. I was, it was horrible. Because people think you're this thing and inside you're like, fucking, what's happening to me? All right, I've been publicly sacked. All right, come on, bro, deal with it, deal with it, deal with it. If you laugh it off, fuck them, who gives a fuck? Yeah, but you've been made out to be this thing and you've been, and it's like, oh, and I've always had to live with, oh, they're going to say whatever they're going to say, just let it blow over and carry on. And I've hit a point where I can't do that no more. From there, I'd got over that. I was just trying to get myself back together. And then I'm in the barn conversion with Emma. It was a Sunday. I got a phone call from my friend Reese. I remember where I was standing, the, phone, the house phone was over here on the left near next to one of the little windows that's on the front of the barn. And I remember where I was standing, it was about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. The phone's gone up, picked it up, and it's my mate Reese, who's now sadly dead, which is another thing that is just not normal. Uh, um, and Reese tells me, he says, look, I'm in the Fairways pub here watching the football, and I've had this guy come up to me, and his name's Zorba. He says, look, he, he's telling me, right, that he's had an affair or something with Tash, isn't it? And I'm like, right, so what? Well, he, he's saying to me and that, because he said he knows, isn't it, that you're, you're not able to, like, Tash ain't letting you see the kid and all that, and he's going to me, like, I was talking to him, and he's going, no, it's fucking out of all this, you shouldn't really be doing that. And I'm thinking, like, Who's this fucking bloke? So I'm like, right, who's this geezer? What's his, what's his name? Like, give me his number, because I want to call him, so I want to fucking talk to him about it. Of course you're going to want to talk to him about it. Right, so I rung this geezer, and I said, right, listen, I want to come and meet you, because I want to know what happened, what you did, and where was my daughter at the time this was going on. 